did you move into comedy? Was it comedy the first thing did you want um, to get into? Or the hustle stopped? No, I was hustling. Okay. You know, or you know that. Okay, so I was it. hustling. And comedy worked its way into my life because I was real good at what I was doing. And I never really had a bad show and it kept popping, kept popping, kept popping. But how did you go from track running to telling jokes? You had to go to a stage. Like, what made you oh, say no, no. one night? I mean, um, track stopped in 82, 83. Okay. And comedy just fell into my lap. You know, how? How? but I, I think that um, the, 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 it, I, I basically turned the negative to a positive that happened with um, me and some famous people. Oh, oh, okay. And I always mm -hmm. learned um, whatever I did in life, I always turned to a negative to a positive. Okay. So I think that was the springboard that propelled me into doing stand up comedy because stand up comedy wasn't on my radar. Right. And then being a college kid, um, especially in the early 80s, and you in college and you tell your parents, that you're gonna be a comedian. See, co comedian in a, in a sense was frowned upon in the early. Oh, sure, 80s. I, I, I you know, trust like, and believe. You yeah, yeah. You're from college, I'm from DC. You're a comedian. Yeah. Get your like, ass a job. Yeah. So right it, it was, it, but I was already on my own. But I couldn't tell my family that really that I was into it until right. I really got good. So by 1987, um, 88, I'm meeting people. I'm doing certain things, right. and then I met Al Heyman. Oh yeah, and Al Heyman oh, yeah. was a concert promoter sure. back in the eighties. I worked with him, and mm -hmm. I did a concert with him with um, I'll be sure, um, Keith Sweat, Bobby Brown, Tina Marie. Okay. And that particular day changed my life because during intermission, um, I was standing next to Bobby Brown, and the local DJ played his local rap roots music, and the crowd just went insane. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I was talking to Bobby, I said, "Yo, who the fuck is that?" And Bobby like, "Yo, there they go right there." But I always been my own manager always been my own agent so i walked on stage and walked up to the dude and i said yo i'm t to the motherfucking k that nigga said i'm easy motherfucking e nice so me uh easy e dr dre ice cube came to see me perform um at the comedy store um a couple weeks later that's a place in hollywood, for in hollywood going yeah mm -hmm. and i took me on my first tour straight out of motherfucking Compton. okay but let me let me ask you so you were on stage emceeing those sh that show without when NWA 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 was watching them just having to hang out at the yeah, concert. Yeah, they was at the concert. Just because, watching, right? Yeah, because what okay. at that time Easy and them was promoting their album straight out of Compton. Okay. So they was there. Okay. So back in the day, you would bring your cassette or your stuff to play in the audience. Right. So that's that's by that crowd reaction. Right. Um, is what led me to him. Okay. And that's okay. what everything else was. Okay, okay. Now, the comedy store back even then it was hard to get in. Now, it was hard to get yeah, in. Yeah, because I mean, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. Right. right? Sure, These young comedians have no idea yeah, yeah, yeah. how people like us right, right. have paved the way right. to get in those rooms. How, but how'd you get in those places? Just because you knew. Uh, I always more had to get the gap. There you go. Okay. Yeah, that's you, it right are, there? you know, I had to get the gap. So um, I was in the rooms, I was performing. That's when we was in the. The original room. Yep, the small one. Yeah, the small mm -hmm. room. It was an original room. Mm -hmm. No, that's and the best medium room. Because the belly yeah. room the belly room's the small room. Believe it or not. So yeah. Easy Ice Cube and them was there. Suge Knight was there, believe mm -hmm. it or not. Mm -hmm. um, and A.J. Johnson. Yep. See, A.J. Ezel. AJ Rest in just, peace. That's how he was getting his start. Because he was sitting in the back with the trench coat Come on. Come on now, I remember with the that. the Jerry Curl. Heckling and shit. And heckling everybody. Come on, dude, he heckled me. In the, in the audience. And that's how he got start doing stand-up comedy. I used to hate him because of that. Like, I remember, because he wasn't a comic at the time. Yeah, he wasn't a comic. And the light's on you, so you can't really see back then. Right. He had all them Compton niggas back then. On right. Monday night, used to be like Monday the black night. night. And he used to, and everybody would come and see right. what he going to do. Right. And just snap I, on you. He, he used to be like, for fuck you. And he's like, you can say fuck you, but that jacket's still fucked right, up. Right, like, oh, right. shit, you know? Crowd was, yeah, 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 God bless him. Yeah, 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 God yeah. Bless him. Well, well, okay, I remember that time. That was a heavy, you know, that was a, a really interesting blow coming up time yes um, yes yes um who's who's who some of the comics you came up because did you go to the comedy act theater uh um, Rob yeah Robin i started with robin harris and them so eddie griffin robin harris um martin lawrence um so were you a regular at the, at the, at the comedy act theater oh yeah, yeah oh you was sure. okay i started when robin harris started really yeah yeah, we, yeah. when they opened the comedy act theater i was there and i ran into michael williams the guy who owns it yeah and um but what people don't know is that i had all the clubs back in the day Oh yeah, like Robin Harris only had the Comic Theater, theater right? but I had the Palace in Hollywood. I had Zeno's. I had... Um, um, you a hustler for real, bro. Um, I had the Birdland West. 
What was that? What, Paradise 24. Yeah, Par- I had yeah. Paradise 24. Yeah, so that? I had all the clubs. Berlin, yeah. And DL was my man. See, I started DL Hughley. Oh, so when okay. I would go on the road, I would give DL the opportunity to host my shows. Okay. So okay. that's how I mean DL got tight. So I taught DL how to write jokes. I taught DL all the little tricks to the to the game of stand up. Right. But and he and he tells everybody that right. he doesn't deny it. Right. He, he'll say that's what I love about him. Okay, this is great. This is, this is a, a quick transition off. So that's why you're known also as I started everything. Who the hell is this nigga putting exactly. TK Kirkland every time oh, I started this? I was right, part I'm of that. Glad, right, because right. of something like what you're saying now, yes. they don't believe it. They're like, well, you started DL Hughley. Well the thing that people don't understand, see if I look like Dick Gregory if I was old and gray, they would believe you. They would believe they me never. because I took care of myself. <laughs> I love there's it. no way, but I'm yes. in my sixties. Yes. So they think that I, th- there's no way this guy can be doing right. what he's doing. Right. So you know, so DL, um, Goffrey. Before we go any further, who is that guy? That, that ain't you, right? That, 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 that the one, the internet guy who says a TK Kirk. I mean, no, no, that's not. I'm glad you brought that yeah. up. There's a young man, everybody who's so impersonating me right. on uh, on these. These platforms. Yeah, on my shit, like in the comments. Years. Yeah, because you asked me about yeah. it. Yeah. It's not me. I don't even have time to do shit like that. And the, um, it almost got to a bad situation because me being a hustler, I had to deal with some gang brothers for a second. What? And they um, called me. Because he spoke something negatively? He spoke something negative about the guys. See, something happened. Come on, brother. And he called, the brothers called me. They yelling all in the background, but I was calm because I already knew where it was going. And, and but I, it took like 30, 40 minutes to get them to understand. I said, yo, play, I don't even move like that. And the guy's like, yo, I know you, I know T to the motherfucker can't move like that, but we had to call you, dog, blah, blah, blah. But right. see, the reason why I'm trying to get this guy off mm-hmm. is because if I was on the street, I may not have 30 minutes oh. to talk to somebody out yes. of something. Yes, I might right. not be able to do that. So it's a, it's a really a scary little situation. So, bro, if you you out there, man, come on, exit that shit with the TK stuff. You, you come to my p- platform, I'm a, I'm a straight damn near delete your ass, man. It's not cool, especially when you, you know, when you take it to the next level. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I mean, because you know? I can, I can yeah. be somewhere. Yeah. And yeah. the way the world is changing. Yeah, yeah, yeah they think it's you. You think it's your, you. Your picture's they on got there. My picture I on thought there. it was you. I was like, damn, yep. TK. Yep. Hey, yep. say something. You invented this shit? You yeah, started this shit? Exactly. Come on, now. I know you. You weren't part right, of it. Right, right, right. Exactly. So right, right, there's, okay. a, there's a lot of things I have done, but the thing that that guy's doing right, is, is right. really bad. Let's talk about kind of not, not what you've done, but like you're known kind of like the gangster comedy. You, yeah, you know I try what I'm to stay away from that. I'm explain to you why. Right. I came up that way. Right. But I've always been a businessman. So um, another comic in New York mm-hmm. has that gangster thing. Okay. I believe in longevity. So I'm, I've always been able to work. I believe that you don't put nothing negative in front of your name. Mm. It's because, see, I try to work everywhere. Okay. See, I do corporate. I do... Corporate? I, I have to go, do, nigga. See, a lot, people don't, a lot of people don't know that I could do corporate. I know didn't know. I yeah. until now. I do a, well, remember back in the day when they had the um, Soul Train yep. coming? You know, I'm, I made it to the finals. Against Chris Tucker, right? Me, me and Chris Tucker. Come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You had that. to have a clean act. Right. So a lot of people don't know that. But Paul Mooney, God bless the... the I remember him... Um, Walking down Sunset because he had heard I made it to the right the finals. finals. It was gonna be on TV. Was yeah, on TV. Like, you, you're kidding me, young man. I never <laughs> thought that you could do right, such right. a. You know, like he was really right. um, um, right. praising. But I tell people all the time I could do a clean act just like that. If you like that clip, hit the subscribe button or the notification bell. In fact, why don't you hit both of them?